peoples, clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we celebrate this Holy Eucharist on this 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. So good to be with you through the goodness of television. And let us prepare to celebrate our Mass as we call to mind our sins. Let us open our hearts to God's forgiving grace. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being. And the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, Lord for you, you have rescued, rescued me. me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his goodwill. At nightfall weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, for you, you have, have rescued, rescued me. me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, and through and though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, 
that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat on the, to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him, and then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talithicum, come which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said, said that, they should be giving, that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So good to celebrate with you again on this wonderful day. And as we do so again, we just have a good reminder of one of the beautiful aspects of our Catholic liturgy is the lectionary. This three year on Sunday cycle of readings that we are now in cycle B that help us to really experience, to hear and to read a lot of very much a part of the Old and the New Testament. And on Sundays throughout the year, the, the three readings often have a common thread, especially the first reading and the gospel. And so, again, throughout the year, the lectionary ensures that we read from many different aspects of the whole of Scripture. Last Sunday, we had this dramatic miracle of Jesus calming the sea in the midst of very terrified disciples while Jesus was snoozing in the back of the boat, not even really noticing, the, obviously, the, the storm that was about them. And it is in that that we can appreciate the apostles, they wake, awaking Jesus in the midst of this storm and saying, Master, are you concerned that we're going to perish and you can perish in the midst of that? And so waking up, Jesus addressed the sea and the wind and said, Peace be still. And it did. It became calm, that Sea of Galilee. And to the amazement of the disciples, they again were wondering, who is this that even he has the power over the wind and the waves? A powerful revelation, as the scriptures often are, of who our God is. And certainly the truth of Jesus not only being a man among us, but being the fact of his divinity, that this is God who would have power over the sea and all of nature, the very aspects that he, be, that he created. And so 
this morning in the gospel just proclaimed. We can confront, and actually all the readings, we confront a very kind of a grim, inevitable aspect of all of our lives, that we are a fragile people, that we are finite. Every one of us will die someday. And it is in that that we constantly are aware of this, even though sometimes we really don't want to talk about it or think about the reality of our death. And it's interesting in the first reading that it was made very clear that God did not create death. That was the work of the devil. And going back to the story of Adam and Eve, it was the work of the devil and the result of turning away from God was that reality that death came into existence, this physical death of our beings. And so it is also in the gospel this day that in that wonderful story of the healing of the daughter of Jairus is that reminder for us because of Jesus Christ risen from the dead, the death no longer has the last word for any one of us as people of faith. It does not have the final sting as much as physical death is still very much a part of our lives. There's kind of a cute story, an Irish story of a Father Mackenzie who was called out in the, at, late at night for a sick call to go visit a parishioner who was in distress. And he, as he passed by the local pub, he looked in the window and saw some of his parishioners just having a great time at the bar of the pub. And so he decided to chastise them for being out so late. So he stepped into the pub and called out, Sullivan, do you want to go to heaven? Sullivan answered, well, yes, Father, I certainly do. Father says, well, get over here by me. And then he said to uh, Kelly, do you want to go to heaven? And Kelly said, well, yes, Father, I do. Father says, well, come and join me at this door. And then he turned to a third and said, Murphy, do you want to go to heaven? And Murphy says, well, yes, I certainly do when it is time. And Father says, well, come over here. And Murphy says, no, I'm not going to do that. And the father was surprised. And he says, well, do you really want to go to heaven? Why won't you come here? And Murphy responded, oh, yes, but when I die, but I thought that you were calling us to leave right now. Sometimes we want to joke about the reality of death. Isn't it true in our lives? But it is very serious matter, is it not? But yet, our faith in Jesus Christ brings us great confidence and assurance that as was said in last Sunday's gospel to the apostles on the sea and to the people in the gospel this morning, is don't be afraid. And we tr grow this relationship with the Lord that we grow a great trust as we listen, in, listen to the scriptures proclaimed in the lectionary and continually hear that message that our God is all about life not just in this world, but eternal life. And for us to grow to be faithful and live with a greater sense of peace and hope because of Jesus Christ. It's very real. It's very possible for our own lives, but also for all of us who are spend time with the grieving and those who are being close to death is to bring that, that truth and that presence of don't be afraid. And it's that healing goodness of our Lord that continually calls us to a whole new understanding of the reality of death, but especially for us to be ministers of that hope and that faith and that confidence. And so we grow that giftedness together. And the people in the parish know that one of my favorite quotes is often to remind us that, that a, a good philosopher once said that how lucky we are in the face of death to have known someone that makes saying goodbye so difficult. How lucky we are that makes saying goodbye to someone we love so difficult when they die or they go away. And that's Winnie the Pooh, by the way. But I also, also totally believe and share too that just think as in the face of death and uh, funerals that we celebrate, that as difficult it is to say goodbye to someone, just think of who is always ready to say hello in that giftedness of eternal life. So may the Lord strengthen us as we grow our faith, as we witness that faith over and again.
I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, of heaven and earth, earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come to God with our concerns, confident that our petitions will be heard. That Pope Francis, Bishop Donald, and all ministers of faith, with the help of the Holy Spirit, may carry the message of Jesus to all that God, to all, that God is the God of life and not death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority and power, that they will govern with justice and a civil and mutual respect for themselves and for those they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in our faith lives, we may come to know that God desires abundance for us and is our rock of strength in times of uncertainty and challenges of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As newly ordained fathers Luke Powers and Michael Wanta begin their ministry in service to God in the Diocese of Madison, that the Holy Spirit may strengthen and guide them as they serve God's people as priests. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, people with disabilities, the oppressed, those near death, and those who are grieving, that, like the story of our gospel today, they may not be afraid but believe in the healing and compassionate power of a loving God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may now enjoy their rest in eternal life in the presence of God, especially Cleet and Dorothy Alt, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life and living, we offer you our lives and our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, Grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave a chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your resurrection until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Is there anyone nearby, please offer a word of peace. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that, bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Mass has ended, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this morning's sacred Eucharistic celebration for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Monsignor Larry Bakke, the pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe, and the director of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison, was our presider of worship. I am Simon Tipps, a seminarian of the Diocese of Madison at St. Francis de Sales Seminary in Milwaukee. For the summer, I am participating in a hospital chaplain formation program this summer at Monroe Clinic Hospital in Monroe and residing with Monsignor Larry. My home parish is St. Cecilia in Wisconsin Dells. The apostolate values very much those who are deaf or hard of hearing and the importance to ensure they can share with us in faith, word, and Eucharist. This special ministry is provided by closed captioning by the Apostolate and this morning's American Sign Language Interpretation by Michelle Gayette of St. Denis Parish in Madison. As always, we express our continued gratitude to the owner, management, and staff of WISC-TV who provide the excellent production and airing of the weekly television mass as a visible sign of their generosity and personal social concern for the faith lives of persons of all faiths living with a disability. May you enjoy a beautiful coming week and may the spirit of Jesus be with you to be not afraid, and may that same spirit be your strength in life.